okay. Hi everyone. I'm Arthur, uh, the coordinator for Electronics and Robotics Club at Bitscoa. Great to be addressing everyone here. Uh, we've gotten really good response so far from uh, all the 2020 batch uh, in response to like their interest in robotics. So we just thought we'll have a quick intro session about the club, about ERC and who we are, what we do, <clears throat> and how everyone can get involved, basically. So yeah, this is just going to be a quick intro about that. Okay, uh, just hold on for a second. All right, let's begin then. Yeah, so who are we? This is uh, this is us, basically, you can see on the right. Doesn't include a lot of our newer members, but yeah, uh, we are a group of uh, highly passionate individuals. We're all interested in robotics and things related to robotics, uh, each with their own kinds of interests, uh, skill sets, and we're all, uh, we all really like building things. Uh, the club is generally involved in robotics projects, I'll talk more about all of these points in detail further on, but uh, the projects in general. Also, specifically, we also have a display project, which we display during the annual Technology Fest. Uh, so you, some of you might have heard about Quark. So we, have, we usually have stands there where we display our various projects and also specifically display projects. We also run a robotic CTE. So CTE is uh, a set of student-run courses, basically. And we run one which is related to robotics. So generally, if we were on campus, we would be running a course where uh, people could get to work on electronics, learn the basics from start. Um, and we'll also have an advanced course. However, this year, things might work out differently. So let's see. Uh, but we do run a student-run course. So, and we will definitely be trying to run something similar this year. We have events and various workshops. So events generally consists of uh, uh, displaying our own projects informing other people about how we build these things, what goes into building them, and also workshops which we uh, which introduce people to various sorts of tools or certain methodologies which might be getting popular and people might want to learn about. Discussion sessions are things we hold internally within the club. So we, uh, this is just like we things we have on Thursday nights where we get together and maybe discuss a research paper or where we discuss so a work a particular member might be doing, or any maybe sometimes even random interesting ideas that we come across, uh, which we might want to build upon. And finally, we also have outings. So this is a key part of the Bitscoa life, which hopefully you guys will get to enjoy next year. This is a picture from one of our outings uh, at a beach in Goa. So uh, really fun times. So I hope we can see each other uh, sometime soon in the near future at one of these events. Who are we more specifically? So, yeah, who are we more specifically? This is us. So I'm Athar. You can see me in the center. Uh, the other coordinators consist of Tanmay, who is the research head, and Vedant, who is the teaching head. Uh, we also have a group of second years, uh, the ERC core, which I mean, everyone hasn't been shown here, but uh, they, they take part in club activities and also help run the various administrative parts of the club. Uh, the, the people who run, uh, like, uh, yeah, so we have the media heads, that's Ashutosh and Pranav, and the inventory heads, Sharian and Yash. Uh, the media heads also have uh, um, handle, like, a group of five, six other people who are behind all the social media posts, the posters, the captions, everything, uh, basically all of our social media presence. And the inventory heads handle the inventory of uh, the ERC when we're back on campus, so stuff like electronic components, uh, various tools and all the other stuff that we have which we use to build the various robots we have. So uh, when we get back on campus, we'll be sure to show everyone the ERC room where we store everything and where we usually work and yeah, get our hands dirty. So this is us. We also have a great group of seniors and alumni who've passed on from Bitspilani or who are in their fourth year now. And they're doing some great work at uh, lots of different colleges and companies across the world. Uh, some examples include that uh, we have a bunch of seniors at the University of Nevada at the Autonomous Robots Lab. Uh, we have various uh, seniors at Carnegie Mellon. So some of you might know CMU has a lot of great robotics labs uh, where they do great research. So we have some seniors working there. 
some seniors are also at the Indian Institute for Science, Bangalore. So they have a robotics lab, uh, Robert Bosch Center for Cyber Physical Systems, uh, and some and a senior also at uh, CSIR NIO at Goa, uh, National uh, at the Oceanog Oceanographic Institute. Sorry. So and uh, in a lot of other places. So uh, basically, we have these great group of seniors. So wherever we need help or guidance, they're always there to help us out. And yeah, just a great bunch of people to be with. So hopefully you can get to interact with these guys more um, once you become more involved with various club activities. The, if you wanna learn more specifics about our projects, uh, you can def I'll highly recommend you check out our website at ercvpgc.github.io. Uh, it has details about all our projects, links to the code that we use in our projects or so documentation related to the projects. It also has uh, links to the various personal members. So we, uh, some of us have, uh, yeah, you can check out a list of all the members in the ERC there. Uh, there's also two more important things, which is the handbook, the ERC handbook and the ERC blog. So the handbook is a place to learn about robotics that we're trying to build as a resource base for beginners. And the blog is just generally where we post interesting things we've come across and maybe have dealt with with one of our projects. Also, I hope everyone who's watching right now is part of the Discord channel, a Discord server. Uh, if not, feel free to get in touch. We'll, uh, we'll invite you there. It, this is basically a place where uh, we hope It'll become a place to discuss robotics and uh, for people to ask about any difficulties they might be having and just in general share interesting th uh, things about robotics. And we have a special tag on Discord called the core member tag. So if any of you are stuck or want to, uh, are feeling a little shy or maybe just want to talk to someone one on one, definitely we are all available uh, using the core member tag. You can just uh, feel free to PM us. So anyone with the core member tag is basically part of the ERC and you can get in touch for uh, like for any difficulties or if you wanna learn more about the club uh, through personal interaction. So yeah, we're all, always available on Discord and feel free to interact over there. I'll talk a little bit more about our projects. Our projects are basically categorized into two, uh, the research projects and display projects. So I already talked a little about uh, our display projects. Research projects are more oriented towards like long-term things that we want to explore a bit more, learn about a bit more, and sometimes even maybe publish papers on or do some work with maybe faculty or professors. Uh, so generally exploration and areas that other people really haven't uh, explored or uh, haven't really uh, looked at that much. So those are research projects. They're generally long-term and they don't really have, they don't usually have a fixed end goal or end time. Whereas display projects are short term and usually focused on uh, the Quark technical fest that uh, BITS holds every year. Okay, so a little bit more about our display projects here. I'll, I'll go through some examples that we've had in the last couple of years. Uh, so the sketcher was one where uh, we had last year where it's basically an end to end automated sketching machine. You just give an image to a program that uh, we, we developed uh, and from a lot of open source software, of course, but you give it, you give the program an image and it was connected to this sketching machine that you see here on the bottom left. And yeah, to the, uh, and it would basically draw everything out using uh, interaction with the motors and uh, con yeah, converting the image that you had into different kinds of artistic forms. So on the right, you can see there are some line drawings. There's also some shaded drawings. So you could choose what kind of art style you wanted. And basically just an automated sketching machine there built uh, completely from scratch. Another example from last year was the clan, uh, the clan project, which was using this mechanism called the clan mechanism, which is a mechanism for, to, uh, for walking, for robots to walk basically. And here you can see uh, the GIF of the robot walking. A specialty about this was, it was all done by first year students. Uh, and you can talk to some of them, uh, interact with them through Discord, of course. And I think it was a great project for them to learn and get introduced to a lot of different kinds of aspects, right? So it could be controlled using a remote uh, remote control. So your it could be controlled using your phone. So they had to learn about interfacing the phone with the robot. Uh, you had to learn about the motors. 
and the electronic interfacing that went into it and also uh, how to actually design this in a physical manner right so you had to actually make the cad drawings for all of the legs and get them printed from a piece of wood and assemble it together so i think it was a great project for them to learn and 2019 we had a flagship project that the whole club worked on called the led globe so this is a really cool project where uh, we had a bunch of leds rotating at a high speed which would give the impression of a globe uh, displaying images so on the right you can see the captain america logo or uh, symbol displayed as a globe and this could display basically anything you wanted uh, uh, different kinds of images and uh, yeah it was a great uh, it was also very large scale it was human scale so you can see people in the background there so it was a really fun project to work on involved a lot of electronics to get all those leds working we also have any we also have an led hexapad which is uh, a project from last year where these hexapads were touch controlled uh, basically a touch controlled midi uh, which was used to produce music basically you can touch the led uh, pads that you can see on the uh, in the images here which would produce different kinds of notes and it was meant to be a uh, audio visual experience where uh, you can play this visual instrument to create some kind of audio uh, to auditory experience uh, to create auditory sounds and stuff so it's a combination of both so a lot a bit more on the display side of things here come moving on to the research projects that we had one of our flagship projects has over the last 2 to 3 years i think now it's getting uh, yeah 3 years now has been the trotbot so on the right you can see here is an image of the trotbot is basically a autonomously driving robot which can autonomously navigate in indoor spaces flat indoor spaces uh, to go from a point a to a point b so if i tell it to go from some coordinate to another coordinate it will do it and it will do it while avoiding any obstacles that it sees in the middle so if a dog comes uh, while it, it is moving on, along its path it will adjust its path to uh, yeah to, it, to avoid the, to avoid running over the dog right or colliding with a person or anything else that it's not there in the map that it has but uh, has suddenly appeared in front of it so for detecting all of that you can see on the top of the robot there there is this sensor black sensor so we were using a lidar for that we're now moving on to using a camera and moving more towards computer vision side of things and to move the one of the specialties of the robot is that it can move in any direction so it uses a special type of wheels called omni wheels it's so omnidirectional wheels where uh, using a combination of four such wheels you can move in any direction you want unlike a car where you have to turn and rotate these wheels uh, to move in some direction this can move in any from 0 to 360 degree direction so this is originally meant to be a delivery robot like more of a product kind of thing where uh, it can deliver stuff from one point to another point in campus but now we it's transition more towards just a testing platform for testing out different kinds of path planning algorithms seeing which ones are better which ones are worse and also we are trying to we thinking of into moving towards the ai side of, side of things so using computer vision to detect different kinds of obstacles maybe using um, different kinds of machine learning algorithms to come up with the path that it has to follow so basically it's a test bed for doing all of these things we're really proud of this project in the club there's also gennav which is started this year itself it's a, it's a completely software based project and you can find this in our github actually uh, so uh, you can find all the code of this on our github this is so it it was an offshoot from trotbot where we were trying out these different kinds of path planning algorithms in trotbot and we thought why not just make a library of these path planning algorithms which anyone can use in the future so this is what gennav is meant to be Uh, as a bunch of different path planning algorithms combined into one library so that uh, it can be easy to use them in any kinds of robotics projects not just in trotbot if we decide to use it on any other robot it should be easy so that's that's basically the aim of chenna and you can definitely check out our <clears throat> sorry on our website you can go uh, to the chenna se project section check out chenna and check out the code the same for trotbot and any of the other projects i'll be talking about today another project we have <clears throat> in the works is called romanov so this is a robotic arm 
which can recognize pick and place objects and then ultimately we're thinking of using it for tasks such as playing games of chess or any other kinds of complex tasks involving picking up and placing things and also recognizing different things so if you think about how do you play chess right you first as a human you first see these chess pieces on the board then you recognize by the color which ones are yours and which ones are your opponents after you recognize the state of the board you do a lot of mental computations to uh, decide which move to take and then it probably the easiest part for you is taking the move but the robot is probably the other way around computing which move to take is probably the easiest part and actually taking the move requires a lot of uh, precision movements from this robotic arm it has to understand that it's picking up the exactly the right piece it has to place it in the correct manner and all of these things require a lot of complex mechanisms inside of the robotic arm so this project is just uh, uh, trying to explore the problems that are there are different ways of solving them a really interesting project there another project we have is echo slam so this is a little unconventional way of uh, uh, is exploring an unconventional avenue of localization so localization is a key problem in robotics as humans we instinctively know where we are within our surroundings so if i'm sitting on in my room in my chair i just know this i don't have to think about it that much but how does a robot know where it is if it moves 5 meters to the right how does a robot know no it's moved 5 meters to the right so this all of this uh, can be solved in different ways one way can be through having a camera and then comparing the images that you're seeing um, in the camera feed and all of these things uh, and then you and uh, using various complex algorithms to determine the position and how much the movement is another way can be through uh, lidar so or or stuff like radar so basically emitting light different kinds of light radiation and using the reflected the time between reflections to figure out how far different objects are and what echoslam is doing is using sound to do it so uh, not just localization but also obstacle detection so just understanding its environment through using sound pulses and uh, use it basically try to develop a cheaper alternative to lidar and radar radar so lidar and radar generally are pretty expensive and not really feasible to use in small robots which you just want to roam around in different places so we're thinking this can be a pretty good alternative having a fully fledged system like this both of these projects have started this year and since we weren't able to go to campus and actually work physically on these robots uh, they're still in the simulation phase but we have great we have big plans for them so definitely do get in touch if you are interested more projects that we started this year is spiderbot and carborum so spiderbot is a six legged robot uh, legged robotics is a pretty complex uh, problem in ro- in is a pretty complex problem because you have to have coordination between all these legs so that the robot maintains its balance and then actually getting it to walk can be quite a challenge so that's what spiderbot is uh, spiderbot is examining a lot of the work up till now has been done more towards the control system side of things so a lot of theoretical work on designing a set of mathematical equations which can solve this problem so you formulate the problems in terms of a set of like uh, complex differential kind of equations and then you find you find solutions to those and then after that you can start thinking about how do i implement these solutions in electronics or on the actual robot carborum is a similar project but here we're using uh, we're trying to build a com- a combination of a car and a drone so i think that's pretty self explanatory the biggest challenge here is that we want to use different ai techniques such as computer vision and especially stuff like open cv to detect what kind of terrain that the robot is on and then choosing whether to use its air flying capability or whether to use its um, wheeled robot capabilities so if it's on smooth road like terrain it's better to use the wheels if it's on some jagged terrain it's better to use um, the flying capability etc so these are the problems we're exploring here okay so moving on to so i've talked about what the projects are specifically but in general all of these robotics projects can be broken down into three steps 
the first uh, three rather than three steps let's say three areas the first area is electronics uh, this generally involves combination of again three things which is uh, you have a microcontroller which is so an arduino is a popular example of a microcontroller and here you're given the the microcontroller is programmed to send out certain electronic signals so on the left you can see a set of leds there and the microcontroller is sending out electronic signals in such a way that the leds light up in a in a special manner your computer is a very very uh, highly scaled example of this uh, where it can do a lot more complex things a microcontroller is just a simple way of doing these things and you can combine this microcontroller which you can consider the brains of the whole project with various sensors so well, I, I talked about the LiDAR, which sends out light pulses to determine where you are. Uh, you can also have cameras. You can have radio frequency sensors. You can have temperature sensors, al altitude sensors, motion sensors. All of these things give the robot information about its surroundings and its own behavior. And these will be inputted into the microcontroller. And the microcontroller then uh, sends out signals for your actuators. So that's the second part, right? where uh, actuators can be stuff like motors, can be, uh, yeah, I mean, you can have motors, you can, I mean, you can even consider stuff like, uh, while they're not actuators, you can consider stuff like lights, uh, anything that produces an effect in the environment. So your microcontroller is a thing that's sitting between these two. Uh, you have the sensors giving it information, the microcontroller processes this, and produces an effect on the environment. And that's what you can break down the whole uh, robotics task into, right? And yeah, the interconnection between all of these things is pretty important. So you need to know how do I interface, say, a camera with something like a Raspberry Pi. So a Raspberry Pi is an example of a <clears throat> common micro uh, of a common mini computer which can be used in robotics projects. Just give me a sec. Yeah, so all of these, the connection between all of these things is what's in, uh, encapsulated within electronics. And finally, you also have PCB design, which is an interesting field in itself, where you try to, uh, all of the resistors and transistors and capacitors and all of these things that you have uh, in your electronic circuit, you try to compress them in a certain PCB design uh, on a printed, in a printed fashion. So that you don't have to replicate them every time. So uh, uh, like on the left hand side, you can see the, an example of a breadboard uh, where you have various electronics components which have been just stuck uh, in place as an experiment. But what if you want to actually have a robot that's being manufactured or you want, you've want you finalized your design of the electronics and you want to use this in a robot. That's where PCB design comes into, play, uh, into the picture where you can Print these print these things on um, on a piece of like circuit circuitry. You can print this circuitry and then use it directly in your robot without having the hassle of wires falling out, etc. And it, it's much easier to mass manufacture robots in this way. So this is like PCBs are there in pretty much every electronics component that you see, not just robots, but also stuff like like remote controls and any piece of electronics that you have. So. The second key area that uh, robotics explores is mechanical design. So the electronics may be controlling everything that's going on, but you still need to have a physical system on which everything is based. So this involves CAD modeling, which is uh, deciding the structure of your robot in CAD software like Fusion 360 or SolidWorks or AutoCAD. And then we also have 3D printing facilities on campus. So um, we have 3D printers within the ERC and also as part of Sandbox, which is a fabrication laboratory which students can use. So this is a picture from there. And uh, it's, a, it's a great way of just quickly producing simple components that you might need uh, to quickly stuck, stick on your robot and try it out. So 3D printing has been great in that way, uh, has been a huge, uh, has had huge effect on robotics in general. Being, making it easy to prototype different kinds of 3D structures uh, that you want on your robot. So this is a key part of uh, robotics itself. So designing efficient and 
uh, easy to use robots and also things that will uh, maybe dissipate heat quickly, uh, will be lightweight also, and will be convenient to test out all the time. And the last area is programming. So you need to give a set of instructions for your robot to follow, right? You can't expect the robot to think on itself. So oh, you can see an example of, uh, a simple example of this is this robot navigating a field of obstacles. So this, this could be thought of as the simplest example of a robot being intelligent. You're giving it, a, uh, you're giving it some set of instructions which allow it to do this. And this is an example from one of our own members which uh, they've tried out and you can find, uh, we've been working on a lot of different things like this, especially in the area of path planning and different kinds of path planning algorithms like I talked about in Genna. And it's not just this, there are, I talked about the problem of localization. So you need algorithms for being able to localize yourself. Uh, you also have algorithms for being able to send electronic signals to uh, certain motors. And of course, on top of all of this, there is also the emerging field of machine learning where the, you, you can devise a set of instructions which allow the machine or the robot in this case to learn from its experiences, which I think will be, uh, which I think will be a pretty, will be what robotics will probably move towards uh, in the near future, will be robot learning and incorporating machine learning in robotics. So having different kinds of deep, so some of you might have heard about deep learning. So these kinds of algorithms inside robots, which allow them to uh, solve complex tasks without a human having to explicitly tell them how. They can just do it pro through experience and through learning. So we don't have a project as such on those topics yet, but we're really looking to start something along those lines. So do get in touch with us if you're interested in this. Okay, so I think uh, I'm going a little over time, but this is probably what you, most of you are anticipating the most. What will be, uh, how can you contribute uh, and how can you get involved with the club? So we've talked about who we are, what we do, it's time for how you can get involved. Our plans involve lectures. So we'll be starting off with three introductory lectures on the three areas that I talked about, uh, one in mechanical design, one in programming, and one on electronics. And feel free to attend uh, any of those. There'll basically be sessions where we'll tell you of, uh, about the tools that you can get started on and the general uh, roadmap or a general kind of sense of what the field has, what are the what are the tasks that people are trying, sorry, what are the problems that people are trying to solve right now, all of these things, and how you can get started uh, doing your own small little projects in these fields. I think uh, the main aim is that when we were first years, uh, we were kind of lost and we didn't know how to get started in a lot of things, and we really didn't have any idea of these fields at all. Uh, we just need, had some kind of superficial idea. So this is just to give you a glimpse of uh, what can be done and what is out there to explore. And the timeline for this is mid-January, right after you have your uh, mid-semester exams, we'll be moving on to this. Uh, we'll be starting with these introductory sessions. Uh, we're also planning to hold workshops on different tools. So a lot of you have, exp have expressed your interest in Arduino and also in CAD design. So we'll have workshops in those. So these will be sessions where uh, we'll be demoing how to use certain software and also how to use stuff like Tinkercad, which is an online simulator, which lets you work on Arduinos uh, so that you don't have to, since most of you probably don't have access to this hardware, you can obviously use these tools to simulate it. So these, this will allow you to start off working right away on different kinds of projects. Also, some of you might have heard of uh, ROS, which is the robotics operating system, which is used a, pretty much universally for automating different kinds of robots, for programming them to do the uh, different, uh, for intelligent things. So the robot that we saw, which navigated the field of obstacles a couple of slides ago, that was developed or that was programmed using ROS. Uh, and Gazebo is a simulator, which is uh, very popular for simulating different kinds of robots. And MATLAB and Simulink, some of you might have heard before, are programs to simulate uh, the kinds of complex systems that robots uh, are a representation of. So for example, uh, our team that has been working on the spider bot, which is the multi-legged robot, has been using MATLAB and Simulink extensively to model uh, 
the robot that they're working on because it can be really hard to simulate this. So first you design a simplified model of the robot in terms of mathematics and then simulate it on MATLAB and simulate. So this is a widely used technique in robotics in general, especially in research. So we'll be having sessions on all of these to get you uh, introduced and get you started so you can start work on these right away if you're interested. Please keep in mind that these are tentative plans, uh, things and yeah, schedules and stuff like that can change, especially from the college's admin side. And so we're keeping this tentative, but we're planning to start with all of this right after your mid -sense. And we also thought that there should be generally when people are inducted, when, when we're back on campus, generally how things work are people come into the club through inductions and start working on projects. So to emulate this kind of uh, interaction with projects and some hands-on experience, we'll be, uh, we'll be having a set of mini projects. So these are just small one to two month long projects, which, uh, which are not very complex at all, but have the aim of getting you to learn one or two specific tools and specific methods so that uh, you can you can understand how things are done in robotics, basically. So, and they, they'll give you some experience so that you can start working on maybe your own projects or some more complex projects. So these will, that's the main aim of the mini project. And some examples, some simple examples can be designing a line following robot, programming the line following robot, or programming an obstacle avoidance robot, maybe designing an electronic circuit for a calculator or a clock, all of these kinds of things. and We'll be set, sending out these as problem statements, which you can choose, and you can. Uh, we'll be organizing various. Uh, we'll be organizing everyone who's interested into groups, so that people can work together and collaborate on these. And core members uh, will definitely be there. The whole of the seniors, every every senior in the club will be there to assist you and help you through this process. So I know a lot of you have approached us saying uh, you're not sure where to start and. And we know it's everything can be a little bit daunting, right? There's a lot of different stuff out there to explore, which you might not have been exposed to before. So my advice for you is just to stay calm and try to focus on one thing at a time. Try to take everything uh, one step at a time and focus on what you're learning right now. And once you start picking things up, it becomes easier. And you start building the set of skills which you have, can be which can be used in different kinds of problems. So... We'll be, we'll be, we'll always be there to help. So even if you feel intimidated or lost, don't feel shy and please reach out to us or just uh, send a simple message on the Discord channel. We'll also be having assignments, challenges, competitions uh, in the near future. Uh, not just right now, since uh, many of you want to start learning these kinds of tools and maybe don't have the uh, aren't as comfortable. Uh, as you might like to get started in challenges and assignments and stuff, but we'll be having these um, maybe in the summer or someplace. And you can see some examples on our website. So you can maybe check out the summer or winter assignments that we've had over the last few years. Basically, they have they involve challenging problem statements, which with the aim of getting you to learn more in depth into a certain field. Inductions. So a lot of you have asked about inductions. We aren't planning to have uh, formal inductions based on interviews as some other clubs might be having. Our plan is to see the active part people who participate actively and demonstrate interest in the various mini projects and workshops and sessions that we'll be holding. And if if you do show a lot of interest, then and you show that uh, we see that people uh, you are learning various things and you're picking things up, then We'll let you work on maybe uh, ERC projects, some of the projects that I talked about earlier. If you're really interested, please uh, reach out to us about these. And uh, if you are able, if you do some good work, if you are able to contribute, and um, yeah, the most important thing is if you do show interest and some time commitment, then we'll induct you into the club. We'll also be, as I said, we'll also be having assignments and challenges later on in the year, so you can stay tuned for those also. And that's about it. Uh, so, sorry, I probably should have mentioned this earlier, but we'd be taking questions in the chat and also on the Discord channel, in the queries, Discord server in the queries channel. 
So I'll just be going over some questions that people might have posted now. And yeah, I hope uh, this session kind of gave you an intro as to what we do, who we are, and how you can get involved. So yeah, I'll just be going through the questions right now. Okay, so one question was, do we get to use Arduinos or Raspberry Pis or something else? So I talked about, uh, yeah, I talked about different kinds of microcontrollers and mini computers that you can use. And uh, Arduinos and Raspberry Pis are probably the most, uh, two most popularly used and most used ones that we use in the club and are used in general also. As to whether you get to use them, Obviously, since you're at home, uh, I mean, you can definitely buy them on your own if you want. But if you're on campus, we do have a, uh, a lot of resources. Uh, we do have a bunch of Arduinos and Raspberry Pis that projects can use. So if once we get on bank, back on campus and if you are working on an ERC project, then you'll be more than welcome to use any of these. Where do we learn all this? Do we need to do preparations? So, Okay. Just hold on a second. I'm sorry for the delay. Okay, yeah. So someone's asked where should we learn all of this? So yeah, uh, I know that uh, this is, everything is a little overwhelming. The best resource is obviously I would say Google. So there are so many tutorials and so many, um, like just there are a lot of things, uh, blog posts about all, di all different kinds of topics. So just searching a question could definitely get you good answers. But I know as a beginner, some, uh, some of these explanations might be overwhelming. So in the club, we are in the process of preparing uh, a sort of document which provides links to get started in different key areas. So say if you want to get started with uh, Arduino, where can you do that? Actually, we already have some links uh, for those on Discord. Uh, but we'll be, doing, we'll be compiling them into a good resource for you to just like scan through and quickly get started on something. If you have something specific in mind, just ask on, uh, just ask. Uh, I'm sure that someone might have uh, looked around for a good resource for this topic and will be able to help you. How much basic stuff should I know to enter this club? So as I said, uh, we won't be taking any interviews or anything like that. And uh, entering the club is purely through how you show interest and what kind of commitment you give to the mini projects we'll be sending out and also uh, how much participation you show in club activities. Another question, are you all thinking of giving some project to firsties this year? Uh, yeah, as I said, the mini projects will be, uh, are, uh, do serve that purpose. So yeah, I think the mini projects will just be uh, projects which firsties can work on uh, in groups collaborate on. Is CTE offering any robotics course? So I'm not involved with CTE personally. You should get in touch with one of the CTE coordinators uh, regarding if whether they are offering any sort of courses this year, if CT, uh, if the CT is like uh, will is going to run projects this year or courses this year, then the robotics ERC will be involved and we will run a robotics course. So uh, yeah, you can. We uh, I think we're all waiting on what uh, uh, what the CT team decides for the projects this year, projects and courses this year. I, another question is, ideally, how many people are selected for the club every year? Uh, I mean, we're getting into the kind of like competitive exam, uh, selection, selection percentage, chances of selection kind of area here. 
generally so just to give an example we're pretty open and we're even more open this year so we're fine with anyone joining as long as you're interested and you're willing to commit time so if someone joins the club and uh, like loses interest in robotics maybe or something else comes up they can they're free to leave and if someone uh, even after inductions are over if someone starts getting interested in robotics and maybe you learn a few skills then you can just approach us and we'll take you like we don't really have any restrictions and numbers or anything like that we just uh, we're open to everyone as long as you're interested and you can commit some time to working on projects and learning new skills does bits give funds for every project so there are various sources of funding that uh, projects can use so uh, i mean inside bits uh, you can uh, you'd probably get to learn more about this as you get on campus and i don't think all of these sources of funding are currently uh, like currently available to everyone so i'm not sure exactly how that is working but in general uh, the various departments on campus such as the electrical department computer science department uh, you can approach them for funding for a project uh, the club also gets a, a certain amount of funding uh, from from the student council and uh, we also have various other sources of uh, funding like in general uh, yeah you there are a lot of different authorities that you can approach so i'm not sure which ones are available right now uh, another good example if you if you have a project in mind and if you want to get funding for that uh, you can approach the sandbox team uh, for for funding and for access so the sandbox is a fabrication lab if i hadn't talked about it before they have 3d printers and various uh, like wood cutters laser cutters and a lot of uh, of cash of arduinos and raspberry pis i think someone was asking for so you can approach them also and they will be able to provide funding if your project is uh, if your project idea is well thought out and good enough so there are a lot of different sources of funding due to the pandemic i'm not sure exactly uh, what is available right now but uh, yeah once we get on back on campus you can start approaching these different authorities and uh, see if they'll be if they'll be ready to fund you i have no knowledge about arduinos or sensors should i start learning it on my own i'm really interested to join erc okay so yeah it's fine if you don't know anything at all most of us were in this place at the start of first year so yeah definitely you should start learning things um, i mean there are there aren't any courses that bits admin gives uh, provides which teach uh, stuff about arduino or uh, stuff like github or any practical things which are used uh, they there are some theoretical courses might might be useful but i think the the biggest advantage that uh, you can uh, the biggest skill that you can learn over the next year is like learning things on your own and picking up new skills by searching online asking seniors all of these kinds of things so that way you'll have a lot of skill sets uh and you you will be able to solve a lot of problems which other people generally uh, can't solve and maybe at the end of your four years you'll uh, be at a place to to be yeah you'll be at a uh, place where you have a lot of different skills and you can go in a lot of different directions so should i start learning on my own uh, uh definitely yes uh, for about anything the sh- the answer is yes so of course after that the question is where should i start learning as i said we'll be sending uh a set of resources for this for, for this sorry and you can ask on um, discord about this again if you have any specific uh, area in mind that you want to learn about do we also have machines for printing custom pcbs on campus yes i think in sandbox there is a pcb printer so yeah we do have that that kind of machinery uh, sorry functionality or things available to us and if if for some reason you can't use that uh, i think there is a lot of online services which you can use which print out pcbs like you provide them with a pcb design and they'll print out some set number of pcbs for you at some cost so you can uh, check it out but definitely sandbox does have that facility is it possible to get inducted even if i'm interested only in mech design or automation so yeah definitely like um most because this is such a vast field it's very hard to know everything and be uh comfortable and be fluent in all these kinds of areas 
and it's it's fine if you're interested in only one now um, that's how most of us are at this stage and probably before also uh, so definitely even if you're interested in just a specific area and it relates to robotics somehow uh, you can definitely join the club and um, the main the main point of having the club in the first place is to have a place where people who are interested in similar kinds of things can talk about it and exchange ideas and work on similar projects so suppose you're interested in mech design another person's interested in automation and another person is interested in electronics the three of you can get together and build something really cool right so it doesn't really matter if you you're just interested in one or two or three uh, as long as you're willing to work and uh, willing to learn new things uh, you're welcome in the club is erc working on marine bots as well a uh, really good question we aren't working on any uh, marine bots as part of the club but one of the seniors uh, is working with the oceanographic national institute of oceanography in goa so they have a few projects related to robots which work underwater so you can definitely get in touch with him um, the, his name is mohit gupta so i think someone will probably uh, send the details in the chat uh, to your question but you should get in touch with him and maybe ask about uh, uh, the kinds of skills you can start learning if you're interested in that field how many freshers can become core members so okay so do you mean from first years to second years so I, we don't uh, some clubs i think have a policy of kicking out inactive people or you might have heard something like this but we don't really have any uh, that kind of policy uh, you're free to stay on um, and as long as you're uh, as I, i'll just reiterate this again uh, as long as you're interested and you want to work on a project you can uh, stay on and be part of the club generally yeah i think that that kind of explains this question right now what should we do what is the next step okay um what should we do what is the next step so as i said we'll be having all of these events which you can obviously attend and get to learn about these different areas and we'll be sending out a resource so if you're interested in say a specific area like machine learning Uh, we'll have some resources where you can get started in that. You can get started and start to build your skill set towards that. And as you're building your skill set, you might think of some project ideas or some cool activities that you might want to do. And yeah, you can start working on those projects. Maybe approach us if you want the projects to be a collaborative kind of thing with other people. So the next step is to start, yeah, to start learning and maybe attending ERC events. Uh, yeah, we've gotten a lot of feedback about how you guys want to study for your midterms, and uh, the midterms are really close. So we've kept all of these activities after midterms. So you'll just have to wait for that. Which language is ideally used to program a robot? I think I answered this kind of question on uh, Discord, so you can check the answer there for more details. But the in general, uh, there are two main uh, two languages that you that are used extensively. Uh, one is Python, and the other is C plus plus. So Python is gen generally used uh, when you want to prototype something, or uh, since it's the easier language and it's a little bit more less efficient than C plus plus, obviously. So it's it's used. It's easy to write programs in Python. So then you can just use it to prototype or to easily sketch out or like just write a simple code and maybe uh, to experiment on a robot. But if you want to put robots into production. or maybe you want to have like more robust robots or stuff that is generally um robotics that is generally done at a higher level so maybe research uh, labs and stuff they use c++ and uh, to to uh, to program their robots all of this is generally revolving around the ross ecosystem so ross is the robotics operating system if you are interested in robot automation you should definitely check out the robotic operating system and uh, feel free to ask doubts like when i first encountered ross i was kind of confused as to what it exactly was now uh, just a simple explanation is ross is a framework uh, so basically uh, if you are trying to automate a robot there can be a lot of things that are going on so there might be you might have to write a different program to move it around you might have to write a different program to move its hands you might have to do, write a different program to process the visual information that's uh, being in through the beamed in through the camera and decide its position and all of that kind of things 
So once you've written all of these programs, how do you combine them into a coherent kind of thing that's functioning together at the same time? So ROS provides a platform to do that. You can do you can write ROS uh, code in Python or in C++. So yeah, I would recommend starting out with either Python or C++. If you're interested in electronics and embedded systems, then yeah, C and C++ are the languages that are generally used. So Arduino is written, Arduino code is written in C and C++. So yeah, those are the languages which you should use. Next question is, will you guys be forming teams? Uh, yeah, as I said, the mini projects will be collaborative. Uh, if you are, if you are, uh, if you do already have a group of people who are interested, then should be sure to approach us. If you don't have anyone, uh, no need to worry. We'll put you in a group. And if you want to work on your own, then even that's great. So it's it's pretty flexible, and it depends on the project. So if the project is large, then you might need uh, to have a group to work with. If we have any pre-existing projects, will it give us an edge for inductions? The edge would be in terms of uh, the fact that you, if you have a skill set, that you'll be definitely welcome. Uh, into the club. If you don't have like any skills and if you're completely starting out, that's also fine. I think most of the members in ERC were like that to begin with. So the sure, uh, if you do have some sort of skills from uh, working on pre-existing projects, you will be uh, you will be welcome. Uh, but that doesn't mean that uh, people who are new should be intimidated because most of nearly everybody is like that. So. Uh, and the journey has to start somewhere, the journey of you learning new skills, right? If we have a pre-existing, okay, uh, any, are any projects being done in biorobotics and exoskeletons? So, no, I don't, we don't have any projects in biorobotics or exoskeletons currently. But if you have some, any ideas, uh, yeah, again, feel free to get in touch. We'll be really interested in starting a project in these areas. Does the ERC have any coordinations with other clubs? So we don't, we, we are looking for collaborations. We haven't, a lot of our members, uh, there's a lot of overlap between members, between the aerodynamics club and the ERC. So generally the kinds of projects we work on are maybe similar and there may be people from different clubs working on the same kind of things. And this next year, we are looking for collaborations. So maybe you'll see more collaborative projects coming up soon uh, in the next academic year. So maybe keep a watch out for that. Okay. So I think that's all the questions that there are that have been sent to me from our team. If you have any more and that weren't really answered uh, by us, Please uh, just ask on uh, Discord or on WhatsApp. That's what we're there for. And yeah, just uh, we'll be having uh, we'll be having these mini projects and we'll be having these uh, demo sessions. All of these things uh, right after your mid -sems. So just uh, yeah, hold on till those come your way. I think some some people have already started. Uh, thinking about projects and the, I think uh, I saw in the WhatsApp group something related to an autonomous driving robot. So yeah, uh, autonomous driving robot. So if if you are thinking of projects right now, you want to work, you want to get started, uh, just uh, talk about it, right? If once you start talking about it, we we can guide you in the correct direction. We can point you towards the correct resources. So yeah. Yeah, so that's it from my side, guys. Uh, thanks for the great questions. I hope you enjoyed the session. And we'll be looking forward to seeing you all at ERC events very soon and hopefully back on campus also, working on real physical robots. So I'll see you guys later.